Now we have the pricing data for each product summarized in a single table. But what are these products? Well, that information is stored in an Excel workbook that we can import and then join with the average product prices table. You can see that the Excel workbook has a single worksheet called Products. The first row of the Excel worksheet provides a description of the data, and the second row has the column headers. When we import this workbook into Jump, we'll use the Excel wizard to specify the appropriate settings for the way the data are formatted. The file can't be open in Excel when I import it into Jump, so I'll need to close it. When you open a file in Jump, the default file type is all Jump files. So I need to change the file type to be able to see other kinds of files. You can change the file type to just display Excel files or just display data files, but the selection will persist for the next time I open a file, so I'm going to change it to all files. Now I can see the Excel file, product and supplier info, and I'll go ahead and open it. This opens the Excel import wizard. The import wizard always remembers the settings from the last Excel file you imported, so you might want to click the Restore Default Settings button. In this case, the import wizard was already using the default settings. The panel in the upper right corner lists all of the worksheets in the Excel workbook. If there are multiple worksheets, all the selected ones will open as separate jump data tables when you click Import, but there is an option to concatenate multiple worksheets into one table when appropriate. In this example, there's just the one worksheet called Products. On the left, the Data Preview pane shows how the data will be imported with the default settings. Jump assumes that the first row in the Excel worksheet will be the column headers, but as you saw in the Excel file and can see here, that's not correct for this worksheet. In the Excel worksheet, the column headers were in the second row. I want Jump to use that row for the column headings, so I'll select it in the Data Preview, and in the Individual Worksheet Settings panel, I'll click the plus sign next to Column Headers Start on Row. This updates the row number to the correct row from the Excel worksheet. Notice that the Data Starts on Row field has automatically updated too. You can also manually change the values in these fields if, for example, there's more than one row for the column header, if the data start on a different row, or if the data start on a different column. There are many other settings that you can change in the Import Wizard if necessary, but for this simple case, I'm ready to click Import. The worksheet opens as a jump data table with the name of the Excel worksheet. The table contains information about the product ID, line, category, group, and name, plus information about the supplier country, name, and ID. Here's another example of Jump saving a source script in the table panel. If I right-click and select Edit, you can see that the script includes the file path for the Excel file and the import settings I specified. You can see in the Rows panel that the table contains information about 5,504 products. After importing data, you should always check the modeling types of the columns. By default, Jump treats a column of all numeric values as continuous and a column of all character values as nominal. In fact, a column that has any character data in it will be treated as nominal. Remember that Jump is column-based rather than cell-based, so if you import data with a column of numeric values where, for example, a missing value is coded using character data, the entire column will be treated as character, and the modeling type will be nominal. In this example, we have two ID columns that are strictly numeric, so Jump has assigned the continuous modeling type to both of them. But in fact, product ID and supplier ID should be nominal. It's easy to change the modeling type for a single column by clicking on the modeling type icon and selecting from the menu. But since there are two columns with the incorrect modeling type, let's see how we can change this for both columns at the same time. I'll hold down the Control key and select Product ID and Supplier ID. The same Columns menu that's available at the top of the Data Table window is also available from the red triangle in the Columns panel. 
I'll select Standardize Attributes, which allows me to apply various attributes or properties to multiple columns at once. In the Standardize Attributes panel, I'll click the drop-down menu and select Modeling Type as the attribute I want to standardize. I'll change the modeling type from Continuous to Nominal and click OK. Then I'll deselect the columns and save the data table with the given name.